Hello, I'm Danielle Weber, and I'm the first author of the paper titled Escalation and Regulation of Emotional Arousal in Couples Predicts Relationship Satisfaction Concurrently and 25 Years Later. So we know that couples communication is related to how happy the couple is in their relationship, but there's still a lot that remains to be understood in this association, particularly around emotions in couples communication. So we tend to think of emotions as a very individual experience, but if we're expressing our emotions to our partner and our partner reacts, then their reaction might then influence how we experience emotions. So emotions we know theoretically can really change a lot within an individual and between partners, but it hasn't often been studied at that level of nuance. So in this investigation, we're really interested in capturing emotion, emotions in a really nuanced way. Additionally, we are also interested in seeing how that nuanced emotional communication, um, if it could be related to long-term relationship satisfaction, because typically research has not been able to follow up couples over a long period of time. So in this investigation, we are really excited by the opportunity to use a data set from our co-author, Kurt Halvig, where he followed couples over 25 years. So what we did is we were interested in the sample of couples communication that couples provided at the very beginning of the study. And so we looked at this one aspect, one component of their communication, and we are interested in one indicator that could give us information about their emotional arousal across time. So we were interested in the fundamental frequency of these partners' voices. So fundamental frequency is a component of the voice that to us we perceive as the pitch of someone's voice. And it's an indicator of overall emotional arousal. And so what this does is because this is emotional arousal communicated in the voice, it's something that the other person can hear and detect and therefore react to. So if we're looking at things like how emotions can influence each other, like how my emotions can influence my partner's emotions, then having something that can really be heard and detected is really important. And because this is communicated in the voice, we can get this information continuously as someone is talking and then get the information from the other person when the other person starts talking. So what we were able to do is look at these communication samples and put them through an algorithm program that gave us these values across the time as each person was talking. And so then we were able to look at this emotional arousal in different complex ways, which I won't get into, but look at how different ways of looking at these emotions and how they're related to satisfaction at that same point in time and 25 years later. So what did we find? What we found was that these levels of emotional arousal in different ways are related to short and long-term satisfaction. So what we found is that if overall emotional arousal for one person was, was generally higher, and if they escalated more steeply in their emotional arousal across the conversation, the other person was less satisfied 25 years later. But if you yourself were escalating more steeply in arousal, you yourself were happier in the relationship at baseline. And we also found some gender differences here in terms of like how each person influences the other's arousal. So what we found is that if men influenced women in such a way that when he was more aroused, she responded by becoming more quickly downregulating her emotions, men were happier in the relationship. At the same time, if women independently were doing that pattern where they were kind of bringing down their emotions more quickly, they were less happy in the relationship. So what this seems to be suggesting is that we might have very different responses to our own and our partner's arousal. It's gen we generally seem to not like it very much if the other person's getting more aroused overall and over time. And this seems especially true if it's women getting more aroused and how men are responding in response. Because it seems like men might be happier if she's kind of more quickly shutting down those emotions, but that's exactly the opposite of what benefits her. So this is in line with some research suggesting that we need to process emotions. And if we shut them down too quickly, that might not be good for us, especially for women. But we might not like it very much if the other person's getting aroused. So this really pulls us to think clinically about how we can navigate these situations with couples. If emotion, being emotionally aroused is making the other person reflect more negatively on the relationship, but for us it's beneficial, we need to avoid situations where it's a win-lose scenario. We need to help people that are process and understand emotions and express them in ways that the other person can really hear and understand and just generally increase how people can tolerate emotions, particularly when it comes to the emotions of women. 
So I, what I think this study shows is that it's really important to understand the nuance of emotions because what we didn't find is one simple pattern of emotions that was automatically adaptive or maladaptive across all people. We really need to dive into this nuance and understand clinically how we can best help these couples. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy reading the paper.